talking today about PDT treatment and how to do it properly. When you greet your patient, you're going to be first, uh, if it is for PDT for the face, um, you're first going to be asking the patient to uh, have some photos taken. In order to take photos effectively, we want to wash our face. Okay. Any gentle cleanser is fine. Bauchi, are you moving your camera? Wash the entire face. There's not going to be one. Well, maybe we'll wash just a little bit of it. It is the entire face that needs to be washed. And you can already at that moment supply, supply the, the hair bonnet. That is, would be good practice so that not everything gets gets totally gets totally wet or you can do it afterwards and then you take photographs here's the portion where you're going to be editing and you're going to be adding the model that has to sit in front of the camera then you're bringing the patient back and the face is already washed for the photograph so we're in we're in good shape with that so the next step for photodynamic therapy is to be sure to cleanse the face appropriately. You can do a number of different things. You can use these small towelettes to cleanse. For the full face, I think two are going to be necessary. Or you can use, can somebody grab the alcohol bottle from underneath the sink, please? You can use a larger container and use a 4x4 four four that you that you Soak and just cleanse. Top, eyes closed at all times. The patient can be lying down at that moment. All needs to be cleansed. All around, underneath. Done. Did I do a good job washing? Not so good, right? Okay, so now this is that. And then we still want to cleanse with acetone afterwards. The acetone is here, Bau. Acetone comes in this bottle, so you're going to take a little bit of that amount. This is the moment where you must have gloves on, but if you leave on your gloves too long, they become melted. There's no exposure yet to anything on the patient because you have still your pad. So I'm, I'm, the gloves are not mandatory to protect yourself from any body fluids. They're going to be more mandatory to protect yourself from the chemical. But if you leave your glove on too long with the contact with acetone, it melts away. It melt, melt is not the right word. It becomes really sticky, tacky, and very awful. So it needs to be a very quick process. So same principle. You have the eyes closed. The patient is preferably already lying down in a comfortable position. Acetone does not burn. It just smells terribly. And you are degreasing the entire skin and then that goes and with that goes your glove shall I re-demonstrate that with the glove on yeah, if they just don't. so that for the camera it's very obvious all right okay with your acetone and a gloved hand but in a very quick motion, you're going to be applying acetone everywhere so that the skin degreases. Be careful not to go onto the lashes or in the eye. The patient has their eyes closed during this, during this process. It smells terrible. This is the way you don your gloves. Turn it around with this one inside and nothing has melted and everything is okay. Now this is the portion, mo portion where you are definitely going to have to put on gloves because now you're going to be using a chemical that you're physically massaging into the skin. There's no cotton swab that's shielding you in between. So you have, for your personal protection, you have gloves on. Using amylose. This is this medicine. If you're treating a full face, the expectation is that we're using as much as necessary that will be covering the face. It can sometimes be the full tube, and sometimes we don't need to use the full tube. If somebody has a very large face and we're treating acne, it can be necessary to use the full tube. So we're going to be using this medicine um, and apply that 
to your entire face. How do you apply it? So I have to shake that. So you're going to be, you have some drop on your hands of your amylose and then you start kind of gently applying this everywhere. And when I say everywhere, you need to have visual control where you actually apply this medicine. In other words, it needs to be everywhere. If there are gap areas, it will not activate there. Ideally, during any application of anything, we want to make sure that our patients has their eyes closed. This is not a toxic chemical, but it should still not go into the eyes. It should be applied brows and above. It can be inside the brows, it will not hurt the brows. The key is even application throughout. It takes some time to apply amylose properly. It's not a matter of, oh, let me just get that on the skin and do kind of, you know, kind of a quick over. You need to assure that it has ample contact. You have to massage it almost a little bit into the skin so that you can be sure it is everywhere where you want to reach it. If you're not sure, go back and distribute it a little bit better. So it should give this kind of little glistening on the skin. You want to be particularly sure that you have it all the way up to the orbital rim down here over the bone. So if you all feel, you can all feel your orbital rim here. You do not go into the actual lid portion. You do not apply it to the upper lid. You do not apply it unless specifically instructed onto the vermilion border or the red of the lip. Okay. Now we have even activation. Now. You're going to say to the patient, let's have you in a comfortable position, but let's assure that this medicine can really penetrate well. That now comes the skill of an artist. <laughs> you are creating a mask. How do you create a mask? You are cutting slits for the eyes, and you have to adjust those as you are putting the mask on. So you have to think a little bit how this can work. I thought I had the second slip already, but maybe it didn't cut. So you start with this for the eyes. You might have to, with your fingers, adjust a little bit. Then you have to cut something in so that the nose can breathe. But still the nose is going to be well covered and can get treatment. And then you have to do your lips. It's much easier when you don't have to do it on yourself. <laughs> okay, so ultimately, there is no kind of right or wrong with this mask. It's like what fits. Can I have a mirror to see what, how I'm doing here? No mirror in the room. It should have nice and even. Can somebody assist here on the side? Yeah. Okay, good. If it's not perfect everywhere, that's not so bad. It's just that you want to get it, get an even coverage to create a warm chamber. Yes, I think this is good. Mm -hmm. And now the patient can lay comfortably in a dimmed room. Let's dim the room. Okay, very good. We have no working lamp for the dimming to here, but we used to in this room. What do you mean? It doesn't? <laughs> well, it, I don't know, it didn't turn on. There's another one. Oh, oh there, there we go. So patients spend some time meditating for an hour and whatever time is to be determined by the, by the protocol. For example, for acne, it could be an hour and a quarter. <clears throat> Sometimes for actinic keratosis, an hour and a half. Obviously, they can be on their phones doing whatever things, but all with incandescent light on, and that will be this light. Fluorescent light will already activate the medicine and should not be used for the treatment. When you're ready to treat, you're walking into the room, there's dimmed light, you take this mask off. It goes into the garbage. Then, you are going to be using water and a 4x4. Again, this should all be in dimmed light. You have your water container already ready on your procedure tray. And you are going to be taking your amylose off. 
So you're going to again go over the skin and it's a, a substance that should rub off the face simply with water. So you're going to cleanse really well, but not with water and cleanser, simply water only. And then it has to dry a little bit. All right. Meanwhile, while the patient is sort of drying, you're going to be using your machine. And the machine is ideally... Can you turn on the lights? Oh, this one is not. Yes, you can turn on the light. But we are not turning on the light in this process here. So the machine is on when everybody knows where the on button is or wants to see where the on button is. The on button is on the side here. Don't be so shy. It's right here. Okay. Okay? Now, there's a code that we need to use to activate the machine. What is the code? One, two, three, four. Yeah. yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, first of all, it will give us the menu. In any, do, do you guys want to move on a little bit? So, this is on automatically if you have the red light filter on. It will tell us 633 nanometer. I'm going to suggest that you come right over here, otherwise you see nothing. It's going to be much more difficult to see if you kind of don't have the kind of the... So it will tell us already what wavelength is attached. That is red light, right? We have red light and blue light. Carol, do you know where the blue light is? It's in the room. Let me go get it. No, that might, might be, be the yellow. yellow, yeah. If you can get the blue yeah. light, in the meantime, so, I want to say some more thing. This should never be like this. Should where is the handle? Mm -hmm. There was a piece of metal that was supporting it. I don't have that piece of metal. No. No, no that's a, that's a lock to put under the machine and actually have it stand and not fall off. And what kind of piece of metal? It would have? support the because this is very heavy and you break the the screw here, but okay. it's probably it's already gone. We now lost most it. of the time we would want to use this machine first with blue light to very quickly get the activation out, and then there is a how do you know the different color lights? Blue or red? I think it says it, like this says oh, blue okay. right here, and then it has the black dot on the sticker. And this says, oh, I see. Revive. nanometer that's the wavelength of the blue light okay so now you can go to menu there are a number of different wa ways of uh, of program programming the treatment you can do it by minutes or you can do it by energy most of the time we do it by minutes so we're going to select enter the pin it's now asking us one two three four is the pin right continue you can do select by time or select by dose. We want time and we don't want 20 minutes so we can reduce that. Um, we can either start it and stay next to it and just let, let 20 minutes pass by or we can actually pee in here 20 minutes, two minutes by simply overwriting it. I use 0200 to do that for two minutes. You would use zero, four, zero, zero in order to get four minutes. Whatever the protocol says oh. is where you would want to go. Okay? So let's go back to, to two minutes. 
hit continue and then confirm the time do you really want two minutes yes continue and now the light has activated but it's still not starting yet so this is the moment that you want to start positioning the device over the patient out here this room is not good for it we need to bring it all the way back can somebody pull out the leg rest a little bit please? behind mm -hmm. behind mm -hmm. behind mm -hmm. and now we have to get the hand up what you want to achieve you want to achieve about a two inch uh, distance to the patient's skin and there are some buttons here that can be loosened up to create a better curvature on the face so that you can get the side of the face and so you need to be able to create a two inch kind of Distance. Can this pull a little closer? It's not going any closer. No. I'm not getting this here. Yeah. Unfortunately, if you guys are trying to bend these guys here without loosening up, this really puts a lot of strain onto the screws, and eventually they will no longer work. get this done it means that the, before you actually activate it you want to equip the patient with a with a with goggles so you have to go back so now you kind of establish the position that you have your goggles in here and you want to assure that the patient wears these really, really, really dark goggles, right? They don't allow any light to go through. They're totally black and they're allowing the light not to kind of reflect. Now, it's much more important for the red light, but this is the patient goggle. And that is going to be applied before you activate. Does anybody know how to hit the continue button there? Carrie? I can press it The photographer has to take a look to see where that continue button is. So now you want to... right. This is, we hit it after everything is set, right? After they have the goggles on and they're all ready. Now, at this moment, it might also be a good idea for you guys, when you activate this, to have, uh, have light on because it can be bright. It's much more important for the red light. Okay, somebody hit the activate button. Okay, feels warm. Tell your patients it will feel warm, but much more importantly, you tell actually your patients that at this moment, when they have actinic keratosis and these are activated, there's going to be, unfortunately, a very, very intense pain situation. We didn't even start with the protocol beforehand, and we're going to tape that afterwards, of how you instruct your patients what's going to be. Okay, so now the patient hopefully can endure this a little bit, can be under this blue light until it times out and then the two minutes are over. And if they cannot, you need to be able to stop the machine. Okay, mm -hmm. Bao, can you go to the photograph to the to the menu and see where the stop button is? There's a pause stop bu pause button. Do you see it? Anyone? Yep, you just pressed it. You paused it? Okay. Right. So the pause will instantaneously remove the, the blue light activation. There's not going to be any blue light anymore. But I still feel some warmth coming here, so I don't know that it's paused. Are you sure? No. Now it is. Okay. <laughs> you turn back on and then off. <laughs> okay, so you sometimes have to work with the patient. Sometimes we hand the patient a fan. I didn't see the... Now the blue light is back on. Uh, I didn't see the fan in this room here, but we sometimes, we sometimes work with a fan 
in order to get somebody's hole. It's not perfect because we don't want the warmth of the skin to turn really cold. Then the activation is not going to be as good. But a little bit of something helps more than not doing anything. Okay? So once this is over and your, your two minutes have elapsed, let's pretend they have elapsed, you can... You don't remove the patient, you leave the patient there, but you're going to be, where are my glasses? You're going to have to switch, switch, switch the filter. Okay, let's avoid the treatment for a second. Um. There is a button where we... Maybe we just let... Mm -hmm. Do we always let it run out? I thought there was a button where we can actually stop it. No? You can turn it off. Yeah, Violently. Okay, we can turn it off also. That's fine. And then you basically do the same. Unlock the thing. Unscrew the top portion. And then change to... Yes? I need somebody to know. Somebody. Um, Do you want me to go? Uh, that's from Infamy? Yes. That comes with conviction or not? Where are you, 15? She's. No, I'm asking is the conviction about the Infamy treatment? Yes. Okay. Um, so I need somebody to. Uh, Brian, will you be able to? Yeah. Are you able to take photos? No. Okay. Uh, I'll get I'll get Stephanie to sit up the front row with it. Hold on. Does Sarah know how to take photos? Yeah. Okay. So it doesn't it slide in. Just the regular top one on the jar, right? Yeah, the, fridge, the, the one fridge. that says lidocaine 23 and tetracaine 7 with lipocene. Yes, Great. okay, we're going to lock again. Again, the adjustments need to be here on made here on those little screw buttons. You need to be able to loosen them up if you again, if you try to bend this and it's not loosened up, then these screws will eventually have no more function. And it's a little bit annoying to have all these little screws, but everybody has a little bit of a different face shape. So play around. If you feel something is not loosening up, try a little harder. They eventually loosen up, and you can choose the shape that best fits the patient. So we don't have the scenario where this side here does not activate only because we didn't achieve a one to two inch distance from the from the LED zones, okay? So play around with it. Sarah's not in here. Okay, and then that way you can, it will all kind of fall in place. Now, the programming of the red is going to be the same as of, of the blue. You have to, however, oftentimes go with jewels here. And so, unless I said specifically use, I don't know what, you know, particular number of minutes. And so, all of a sudden, you see, it has ch changed to 633 nanometers again. You will obviously have to put in the pin one more time. And then you can select time or dose. Now, if we want to, this is going to be the max dose that can be delivered. And many times for acne, we want to deliver this max dose. And it might be about a 25, 22-minute treatment. So you can hit continue. And then you're going to be asked confirm this and you say yes i still want to continue now this is nothing so this is the moment that you are adjusting so that the, it fits over the patient and many times the patient will say this is awful this is so bright once you activate it i can't stand it so you have to pay, prepare the patient beforehand it's going to be very very bright every once in a while we we'll do some tricks not only that we use the these shields, but we do actually use some extra gauze to put underneath, and sometimes we have no other choice but actually putting additional goggles on top. But sometimes it can look like this. 
and you want to be sure that you're not, not obscur obscuring too much skin with your gauze so that you have still even activation particularly for those people who have actinic keratosis and they have them right here you want to make sure that you they are going to be able to be activated and maybe this is going to be enough who knows and if it's really not enough and the patient can really not go through anything you might even have to put these goggles on now if you put these goggles on a number of caveats you, you only treat underneath here that's already not so good unless the patient has acne only here where you can really kind of get away with it and there's also an area on the temple that you're not going to be treating right so the idea would be hopefully you can make this portion happen so much so that it's okay and the patient can go through it and i just want to demonstrate for a moment how bright it is this at this time you guys really want to be protected you want to have one of those goggles on because when we hit this continue button this is the brightness right okay and this is bright very bright and there is not going to be any specific pain that the patient experiences once they're under the red light but it's really uncomfortable because of the brightness and some people cannot tolerate it and once the treatment is over you remove this one from the patient and then you remove the machine sideways and then the patient will have sunscreen on the sunscreen that is going to be used when the patient is I don't have any sunscreen in this one. Normally we have we don't do this treatment in here, so it's uh, it is something where we sometimes even carry some in the box. If the patient is going to go home and was able to complete the treatment, we're gonna be using a physical sunscreen. I don't know why these sunscreens are in this box, but okay. So this one would qualify as a physical sunscreen. It has zinc oxide and titanium dioxide inside, and that one would be okay to put on as the patient leaves. The patient's already going to be a little bit pink, and then we're putting on this sunscreen on the patient's face, and then the instructions will come with the patient to not have any exposure to daylight, fluorescent light, sit near a large window for the next 48 hours. The 48 hours start from the moment that you put the amino labelinic acid on their skin, which was already now an hour and a half before. And the patient needs to be committed to wearing sun protection if they were to go out, and it must be the physical sunscreen type. It can only be the ones that contain zinc oxide or titanium dioxide or a combination of both. It cannot be just any sunscreen. And they need to commit to that and be applied every two hours during that period of time. If you were treating areas that can be physically shielded, such as the chest or the scalp, and if somebody can wear a hat, obviously you don't need to put sunscreen on. That is for exposed areas. Let's say if you were treating arms, forearms, and the forearms can be shielded, but the hands not, the physical sunscreen goes there. So it's really, really important to avoid additional activation because the activation is through daylight. This 630 nanometer and the 450 nanometer, they are in the spectrum of our daylight. This is what we see every day, and that was the, what the sun emits without being UV rays. There are no UV rays here. And so that is important. Now afterwards the patient can continue with the same sunscreen or they can use a chemical sunscreen of their choice. So any sunscreen afterwards, after the 48 hours is fine. When they're in bed, they don't need to wear sunscreen. It is for the times that they might be going out and where we want to avoid additional activation. Okay, we need to do a little role play for the um, how to instruct the patients when they're first coming to photodynamic therapy. Are there any particular questions about photodynamic therapy until now? Yes. So if you're doing like the legs or the arms, do they still have to wear those goggles or can they just wear normal glasses? So it's too bright mm -hmm. in the room. Like you want to wear for the red light, you want to wear those goggles and, um, and they want to wear those okay. goggles because it's really bright in the room and it's not necessary. For the blue light, it's not kosher, but for the red light, it is very kosher. Okay, and then when you're putting on the Levulon, it's 
your spa treating, you're not like gonna put the entire leg unless you instruct us to. Well, it is if we're treating actinicare and you apply the amino lavalinic acid, typically after the prep. Now, what we did not put in is that many times from this process where we're putting the acetone on the skin until we're actually treating, we are going to be using some ancillary methods to prepare the skin. And so I skipped over that. So after you have that acetone on and everything is decreased, the patient might have already been instructed that they need either CO2 laser um, kind of perforation, sounds bombastic, right? Um, or microdermabrasion or 1540 nanometer laser treatment and that is already scheduled with the estheticians. And then so basically you're going to be escorting the patient to the esthetician room, whatever uh, treatment needs to be done. Uh, sometimes it can be curatage with Linda. If it's CO2 laser, it's with me. So you're going to be walking with the patient to, to that room that needs to be specifically used in order to do that prep in between the acetone and the application of the amino lavalinic acid. And then you're bringing the amino lavalinic acid with you into that room and you apply the amino lavalinic acid basically. Um, no, sorry, you have the amino lavalinic acid with you in your pocket. You're going to be escorting the patient to a dimmable room. It can be this if we have all everything in here, or it can be Jagodi's room, where we have most of the time all of the, the agents that we need there. And, uh, and then you go from this process of where the amino lavalinic acid is applied, where you actually dim as soon as you are sure that you have an even coverage on the area that you need. Um, does that ex kind of explain all of it? Okay, then um, the, it is also when you're using, you might say, oh, you know, let me do the patient a favor and let's say it's uh, actinic keratosis that you're treating and you see there are hundreds of actinic keratosis everywhere. But the treatment zone was not necessarily defined. Or the patient is pressing and say, well, can't we also treat here and here? And you say, okay, well, let me just open another tube. I'm just going to say that amino lavalinic acid is very expensive. Each tube is about $200 or up to $300, depending on, on the, the discounts that we're getting. And, if, and the insurance is going to reimburse one tube per treatment. One. No more than one. And so... You know, don't be heroic and think, you know, this is a trivial matter. It's also not trivial to do the activation because the activation takes a number of minutes. And so you have to, you cannot activate all of it at once. Let's say you can activate two forearms and hands together by putting the, the light like this. You know, that's relatively easy. But the underside of a forearm typically doesn't have actinic damage. So there's no need to put amino lavalinic acid on, on a portion where we're not treating. Right? And, um, and so you need to kind of learn a little bit of what these portions are and or ask somebody what might be the treatment zone if you're not uh, entirely sure about what the treatment zone is. Okay, so we need to do a little bit role play right now for the how you instruct the patient when you first bring the patient back. All good? Okay. Brian, you're going to be the patient. Okay. Why don't you sit in this chair here? Okay, Miss Gilbert, yes. you're coming today for the treatment of, uh, for, for, uh, Miss Gilbert, I'm Francisca, I'm the medical assistant here, and I'm helping out Dr. Ringfeld. Wonderful. And you're here for the treatment of your actinic keratosis on your face, correct? Correct. Oh, the patient may say, oh, I thought we're treating the chest. Okay, no, but you know, mm -hmm. so it's correct. I just, you know, want to reiterate the things that Dr. Ringfeld said during the visit. This is going to be a relatively lengthy appointment. I'm going to have you cleanse your face first, and we're going to take a couple of photos, and then we're going to um, do, going to do another layer of cleansing. Then we're going to walk over to one of our estheticians who's doing a microdermabrasion, which helps us better apply the medicine. And then we apply the medicine in a dimmed room, and you're going to be in this dimmed room for about an hour and 15 minutes. And you can do during this time anything that you want. Did you bring an iPad or your phone with you? I have my phone. Awesome. Great. So you are welcome to use that. Or you can just relax during that time. Whatever, whatever you would like. But you're going to have a little bit of a cover on your face. A saran wrap cover just to keep the, thing, the medicine nice and warm in order to help the treatment better activate. And then we are going to, after one and a half hours, we're going to be activating the medicine. This, this portion, this is where Dr. Ringfeld always says, 
you know how it can actually hurt or be quite painful and it's going to be a brief period of time that it's going to be painful about two minutes I hope I can get you through that but I will do my best to make that happen if it's really not possible we'll have a plan B but for the moment hopefully you'll be able to get through that and then after the two minutes I'm going to be switching the light source to a different type it's going to be switched from blue light to red light and that's going to be another 15 minutes or so that's for actinic kyptosis and then you're going to be done you're going to be looking a little red maybe a little bit swollen after the treatment and uh, I'm going to be putting sunscreen on you and then you can basically do anything what you that you would like to do but you need to have uh, physical sunscreen on and that physical sunscreen is a sunscreen that is based on minerals and those minerals are titanium dioxide and zinc oxide so this is uh, the qualification for the sunscreen that you need to have for 48 hours from this moment on do you have any questions no you explained it great okay are you ready for your treatment i'm ready all right can i get the sunscreen here ah yes you if you don't have physical sunscreen at home we have on the shelf and mineral we have it either in tinted or in untinted or elastin hydrogen the anthelios mineral is a little less expensive it has nothing to do with anti-aging the other one has a bit of a higher price tag because it's an anti-aging sunscreen um, and so uh, you're welcome to um, to purchase either one of those great do you know the price 3180 for the mineral and for the elastin yeah. hydrogen 5850 maybe something like that okay. but if you happen to have a mineral sunscreen at home you can use that we will anyway apply the sunscreen here for your way home okay okay any questions The patient might have many questions. How much does it hurt? Everybody's different. If you have a lot of actinic damage, it hurts a lot. If you have a lot of acne, it hurts a lot, right? And again, it's, you know, you just say, I'll get you through this. And then again, the fan, where is the fan? It's probably in Chagrini's room. Okay. And the fan can be used. And the, usually we actually have our patients hold the fan so that they are more in control of how you know it kind of blows on that again if it's cold for a long period of time it's really uh making the treatment inefficacious so it needs to be really just for brief periods of time yes so if it's not on the face and it's on both forearms how will the patient sit will the patient sit just like there and then just um, move it in a way that's comfortable for them yeah, if this, we can move this further down mm -hmm. and have it like this, right? Again, the goggles need to be on at least with the red light. It's good practice to do it with all of the light sources, but to um, have the patient sit on here. I mean, you cannot really have the patient sit on a low chair like that. And because this one doesn't low, lower itself sufficiently enough to be able to Maybe yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think yeah, it's you know, you don't like something like that. No, you don't have to. You have to kind of hold it in front of your hands and sit sideways. She will not be able to hold the hands for 25 minutes. Okay, well then we have to find some sort of different way on the feet. But you see, a little, there's a little flexibility in here to do, to do the, the treatments however we, we think it's 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 reasonable to do and possible to do i have another question yeah is it painful after i go home you can experience some tightness when you go home and if it is there there are actually some instructions for the parts that for, sorry for the pdt as to do what when uh, and there's a sheet Where's that sheet with the post photodynamic therapy instructions that you guys used to? Oh, you know that. Okay, so oh, technically, wow. before you see the patient off, you want to go through those instructions. It's a, there's one paragraph that goes over um, if the skin really looks like little kind of milia occur everywhere. These are little white bumps that can occur everywhere. They can use uh, water vinegar soaks. They apply those water vinegar soaks for ten minutes. So you use a you make you use two parts of water and one part of uh, white distilled vinegar. Let's say half cup of a full cup of water and a half cup of vinegar. You make a little kind of jar full of that. 
you put a clean washcloth in, you wring it out, it should not be dripping when you put it on, put that whole washcloth on your face, lay down with it, or sit up with it, I don't know, maybe lay down with it. 10 minutes, and you very efficiently soak the skin, and then it, and then any lightweight moisturizer is fine, but if, if you do this about four times a day, it actually lifts these little clogged sweat ducts off, and the clogged sweat ducts occur because of the energy that is produced while the, uh, while the actinic ketosis go away or the ointments are destroyed. Um, and so that can happen as a side effect, and it's relatively transient. There are some patients who will require topical steroids, so if they're in really, if the skin feels super tight and not right, they're instructed to call the next day, and then we'll call in a topical steroid for them that they apply probably for about five or seven days. Remember, we used to have patients with some severe reaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we say that before we treat those patients. This is what the physician says in the room. Like we're going to, sometimes we even show them pictures. It can get that bad. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and, uh, and so that is something that, I don't know if, we, I, I don't know if we, we really totally always remind them of it. I think when there's an acne patient, we do remind them that there's a rare patient that can have a very significant reaction. Um, and, uh, and really, it looks as if, you know, I don't know how to call this reaction. It looks bad. Bad. They cannot, they cannot actually go to work if... No. That's with acne. That is not with actinic Yes. And we'll tell them before, and you need to take a week off. Like, you know, they come already with the preparation that they're not going to go to work. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to say it? No. Uh, I mean, at that, that is already set. Too during, late. <laughs> but if they didn't make the, their preparations to not be at work, I mean, if somebody has had photodynamic therapy, you know, with us before, just a month before, and says, okay, I didn't react so badly, I think I can go to work, that's their, obviously, their choice. But that very first time when they have photodynamic therapy for significant acne, they were already instructed not to, to plan it so that they are not going to work or school or whatever. It's really bad looking sometimes. Very swollen, very red, and within 14 days typically goes away. But they need a, oftentimes a lot of hand holding and they might need some prescriptions in order to manage that. Any questions? Anything that I might not have addressed? Okay. Where are we with the schedule? Are we falling terribly behind?